hello and welcome to this Royal Society Publishing video podcast. Today I'm joined by Professor Timothy Layton to discuss his paper that was published in Proceedings A that looks at whether dolphins think non-linearly. In this paper, entitled Do Dolphins Benefit from Non-Linear Mathematics When Processing Their Sonar Returns, the authors have developed a new method of sonar processing which may mimic that of dolphins. So Tim, what is it about dolphin sonar that first got you interested in working on this project? Um, about 10 years ago, I was watching a wonderful BBC Blue Planet uh, video, which showed dolphins swimming uh, along, trying to catch a herd of, I think they were sardines, and they were blowing bubble nets as they went. And that immediately struck me as very strange, because we know that dolphins' most spectacular sensory apparatus is their sonar. And yet we also know that no man-made sonar would have been able to detect fish in the bubble clouds that they were producing, which left a big question in my mind. Either the dolphin were, ha were doing something better than, than we could do with our man-made sonar, or, or they were blinding themselves, blinding their best sensory apparatus, their echolocation, when they were hunting. So the dolphin must have some other edge. We know that there are some edges it obviously has. It's uh, very fast and mobile, and if it's going for a target, it can send sonar pings at it from many different directions and get many perspectives. Uh, but it also has a really big brain that's uh, lived in the ocean for 10 million years, evolving ways of echolocating in difficult environments. So I did wonder if there was some processing going on in the brain with these sonar returns. So we looked at the signal processing that, 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 so that, that might go on if you had a lot of computing power like a brain. The students like to call this, uh, do dolphins think non-linearly? But it's not really thinking, it's not about cognition, it's the signal processing that the brain can underdo. Okay, so if we assume that dolphins aren't blinding their sonar, what might they be doing to process the signals in bubbly water? Well, the first signal that, 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 that I thought might work um, uh, was something that uh, we call TWIPS, Twin Inverted Pulse Sonar. And that is uh, a, sig a sonar signal that sends out two pulses, one immediately after the other. And they're identical, except that the second one is inverted with respect to the first. It it's exactly the same waveform, except it's multiplied by minus one. So you might call the first uh, pulse plus one, and the second pulse minus one. Now both those uh, go whizzing out into the, uh, into the ocean at the bubble cloud where there's a fish and there's some bubbles. And we know both would be scattered strongly off both, particularly str strongly scattered off the bubbles, and so they would clutter the image for the dolphin. A bit like a fog cluttering your car headlamp. But if it uses these two pulses, plus one followed by a minus one, then something very strange happens. Those pulses reflect off the fish in a way pretty much unchanged. You get a plus one and a minus one back. But when they hit the bubble and they drive the bubble hard, the bubble is a non-linear oscillator. Um, it, it, when, a, when a waveform, a pressure waveform hits it, that's a high pressure followed by a low, in the high pressure it can only contract. It can't contract smaller than its radius so it disappears. Whereas in the low pressure it could expand as far as it likes. It's asymmetric when it pulsates. So a lot of its energy doesn't come back just as a, a mimic of the signal that hit it, but as a square of the signal that hits it. So if you like, it sends back plus one squared and minus one squared. So I thought to myself, what could the dolphin do with this? And it's an issue of, uh, it sends out this plus one and minus one in its solar pulses, ping ping. And when it receives the time history, it breaks them in half and adds them together. Now, if you add together the scatter from the fish, you add plus one to minus one and you get nothing. So the fish disappears from the sonar. But if you add together the scatter from the bubbles, you get one squared plus minus one squared, which equals two. So the bubbles scatter very strongly and the fish become invisible from the sonar image if you send out those two pulses. But now let's take those same two halves of the echo instead of uh, adding them together, you subtract them. The fish scatter plus one, minus, minus one, which is two. So it's a strong scatter from the fish. But the bubbles scatter one squared, minus, minus one squared, which is zero. So if you subtract the two pulses one from another, the fish scatter strongly, 
and the bubbles become invisible. So that was great. We, uh, no one would fund us to look at this. <laughs> so uh, I raised money by doing some consultancies and used that to hire a student, um, Dan Finfer, and uh, my uh, good friend and colleague Paul White. We set to work to see whether these ideas would, uh, would play out. They worked in computer simulation. They worked in a big underwater test tank that we have, containing about 200 tonnes of water. And then finally, we uh, dragged a sonar in the wake of some really big ships, four or 5,000 uh, gross weight tonnage, as they, as they steamed up and down Southampton water. So we, we wait for a big ship to come along, we steam up into its wake, and the sonar would ping and try and see the seabed through the bottom. And it worked, it worked brilliantly. So we knew TWIPS worked, and we published a paper a couple of years ago in the, in the Proceedings of the Royal Society, and uh, everything seems great, except there was still a question remaining, and that was, is this what dolphins do? And uh, so I'd advertised uh, quite broadly uh, to, to the dolphin community that I was, I was looking to the community of dolphin scientists, not dolphins themselves, and to, to their community to say, look, do you ever see these pulses? And there were sort of clues, and if you take lots of different species and add the bits of what they do together, you could just about see that they had all the ingredients, but none of them seemed to be doing it. Which was, which was, it was a half a story. We'd got a, uh, a sonar that worked, but it wasn't the solution that dolphins were using. And what is the new method that you've developed? Well, we got TWIPS to work and it was lovely, but the question remained, what do dolphins do if they don't do TWIPS? Um, so I got together with my friend Paul White and we had a new student, uh, Gim Wachua, and we started looking at what signals dolphins do send out and whether they can uh, make use of the same kind of nonlinear processing, the squaring of numbers and the adding and subtracting, whether they can make use of that kind of thing um, in a similar way to TWIPS did. Now, when dolphins send out a, a signal for echolocating, it sounds something like this. A series of clicks. And uh, they can send them out really fast, so they almost sound like a buzz. So they're sending out all those signals. And, uh, but the amplitude of those signals wasn't the same. Every click wasn't the same loudness. They varied. And that was a difference. And we were interested in the differences from one click to the next. So this sounded interesting. If the variation in amplitude between two clicks could be used in nonlinear signal processing to, uh, to distinguish between a fish and a bubble, it would be very exciting. So how would it work? Let's say we send out two clicks, click, and then after it, a slightly quieter click. Let's say the second click is a third the amplitude of the first. Click number one has amplitude one, click number two has amplitude a third. So let's send them out, click, click. Now when they come back, the amplitude from the, the fish scatters the first pulse back as one, the second pulse it scatters back as amplitude a third, Let's take that second pulse, multiply it by 3, and subtract it. So it's 1 minus 3 times a third gives you 0. So this time subtraction, with the multiplication, kills off the fish scatter, makes the fish invisible. But the bubble scatter, the bubble scatter is strong. You get 1 squared minus 3 times a third squared, which is 1 minus a third which is two thirds. So here the bubbles, when you subtract, the bubbles are strong and the fish has become invisible. Now, let's say mentally we sent out two clicks, click, click, a loud and a quiet one. And this time we, we add them. When we add the fish scatter and multiply the amplitude of the second echo by three, we get one plus three times a third. That's two, so that's a strong scatter from the fish. From the bubble we get 1 squared plus 3 times 1 third squared, which is 1 plus a third, which is 4 thirds. So it's not as strong as the, as the fish scatter. So it looks like it might work. So we set about again. Did a simulation, seemed to work. That gave us enough um, uh, faith to set up a sonar source in our big underwater tank and do a, uh, a tank experiment. 
we took as real uh, as, as as close to a dolphin pulse as we could generate we played it through our sonar source did that biops you know biased pulse summation sonar biops processing and sure enough we could tell the difference between the target and the bubbles is there any evidence to suggest that dolphins might actually be processing signals in this way? None at all. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all I've shown is that it's possible. If dolphins were making bubble nets and suddenly shift the frequency of their pulse down, that would be a really good indicator that it's another piece in the puzzle. It doesn't prove they're using biaps, but it would be a great indicator. If they just shift their frequency down a bit when they were making bubble clouds so that their the up, so that whatever the centre frequency of the pulse they were emitting was less than half the upper frequency limit they can hear, that would be a really exciting piece of evidence. Again, not conclusive, because it's very hard to work out what's going on in a dolphin brain, but a very exciting piece of evidence. And if they're not, it means that maybe we haven't solved the puzzle yet of what dolphins are doing when they hunt with bubble nets. And what are the human benefits of non-linear processing? What we have done is with both TRIPS and BIAPS, we've produced uh, uh, a way of processing, generating and processing signals that can distinguish one type of scatterer from another. That's exciting in sonar, um, particularly as a lot of the um, naval operations of importance are in shallow water, um, where, uh, for example, last decade in the Gulf, where the, you know, Naval and merchant and aid vessels were, were very worried about um, mines hidden in the bubbly water. And so what we hope we do is we've, we've developed a, a technology that can help in shallow water um, safeguard lives and, and equipment. And, but also, thinking wider, there are an awful lot of uh, landmines that are underwater. Um, there are uh, improvised explosive devices and the TWIPS and BIAPS processing isn't just, um, it isn't just uh, restricted to sonar. You could use it with radar. Now with radar, it'll tell you the difference between circuitry and soil. So you could use it to detect these sorts of devices. Um, they discriminate between circuitry and soil in, in the same way that the, in sonar, they tell the difference between a, a fish and a bubble cloud. So there's a lot of other exciting applications that we know potentially out there using these signals that are derived from just thinking about how on earth can dolphins use their sonar when they're hunting with bubble nets. Thank you very much Tim and thank you all for watching.